Hey everyone, welcome back to KC3 Sparks. Today we are going to be making a Skyrim bookshelf with some Skyrim inspired books on top of it. So that way you can have that incorporated into your next D&D game. As you can see, I have a box already here or cube and my my scene is set to inches. The cube itself is set to 2 inches and the scale of my grid is set to 0.25. So what we're going to do first to get the look of the bookshelf is I went ahead and pulled some images off of Google. So this is the one that I'm kind of going to try to do today and maybe try to get a look of a couple of these books. Now I know a lot of this is just texture for the books, but I would like to try and add some of these details in so that way when painting it just looks a little bit more real and they're just not these boxes <laughs> that print out. For the bookshelf, however, I'm probably not going to add in all these little rivets and these side boxes and handles as well. Of course, you are more than welcome to. I'm sure they'd look really nice, but they're pretty pretty small, so I'm not sure how well they'd print out. I'd like to test out just the plain bookshelf itself and the textured books. So let's get Blender back open. And I'm just going to start in front view, go into edit mode by hitting tab. Now I want it more rectangular, so I'm going to do actually get back out of edit mode. And I'm going to have the height of the bookshelf probably just be 1.5 inches. Probably make it much better. The depth, we will do 0.25 inches. And of course you can always adjust these later. And we will do 0.75 inches. And that looks much better for the size of the shelf itself. So now let's go into edit mode. And what we're going to do is set up the lines for the bookshelves. So there are three shelves on it. So that means I'm going to want six edge loops in here. And we're just going to size them down by height until we get the appropriate thickness that we want. I want my shelves to be about that. Looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to grab each one and pull them to approximately where I think I'll want them. And of course, I can always move them later. Something like that looks good. Okay, now that we have the shelves lined up, we'll go into front view and we're going to hit E to extrude these, but we're not going to do anything yet. We'll hit size. X to size in this way because if we size the whole thing then our lines for the shells get messed up. So we'll do that and then we'll grab these two and these two and size them that way. Bring that down so that matches up. Perfect. We'll do it like that. Now we are going to go ahead and grab all of these and hit A to extrude and bring it back. Now I could have extruded just the um, bigger faces so that way these could have stayed as shelves but then we wouldn't have gotten that lip. So now that it's totally inset I'm going to create a loop here for that lip itself because you can see here the shell's actually inset a little bit, and it's just easier for me to model it this way. So what we'll do to fix that is we will delete these faces and then grab these, hit space to pull up the menu, and hit bridge, and there's your shelf. So basically all we have left is the feet at the bottom of the shelf. So we'll go back and add in two loops. And that's pretty much set up perfectly how I want it. Back into face view, hit E to extrude. We'll bring those down, probably about there looks good. I can always change that later, like I said. We're just gonna grab these two. Oops and move them so they're angled. Perfect, there. 
is the basic shell. Now, of course, you could go ahead and print that out if you want it as is. If you wanted an empty shelf, then fill it up with your own books that you've already made. But I'm going to show you how to make the books in Blender as well. So I'm just going to hide that. And we're going to add in another cube that is way too big and size that down a lot. We'll just do there. Obviously, this is just going to get the basic book going. So I'm just going to go straight into edit mode and size it to be more book shaped. Kind of like that. We'll just start with that basic shape. Looks pretty good. I'm going to add in two loops and that can be for the actual um, book cover itself. And we'll add another one right here. So now you can kind of see, yeah, that book cover. And then what we want to do is grab these, hit E to extrude, and size inward. However, you want to pay attention because you'll notice that this starts to go in, so you'll want to move it back some. Like that. So probably want to move this back out a little bit. It might be a bit too much. Yeah, let's bring it back up. Books aren't that deep. I mean, I guess some could. Just do however you want, but I'm actually going to bring this down pretty far at the bottom because we are going to have this pretty much down at this part right here be booleaned in. So I'm going to add a loop to keep that in mind. Whoa. We'll probably sink it into the bookshelf shelf that much. So I'll want to look at all of this up here above that loop to do the actual decoration and not center it on the whole model. What we'll do is rename that to basic book. Yeah, basic book. And we'll kind of save that as is. And we can just copy that, hitting Shift D, and we'll hide basic book. So that way we have that created. We don't have to worry about messing it up and we can use that model to build other models off of that and just add in de different decorations. So for this one, one of the things I wanted to try out is beveling this part. So control B, just a little bit. I'm not sure how I like that, but I'm gonna leave it for now anyway. They're not going to worry too much about the back since they're not going to be removable from the shelf itself anyway. So we'll do that. That looks kind of nice. I like that. And then what I also want to do is add in four of those and do some ridges on the spine of the book. Nice. I want to kind of exaggerate it because once it prints out, it'll probably be a little bit different. And if I want it, I could always sand it, but kind of like that as is. I think that'll print nicely. Just enough where it'll probably give me just that little lip that I want. I know it looks dramatic in here. Trust me, you want it somewhat dramatic. And there's one book. Easy. Now, of course, you can continue adding in more ridges if you want, because looking at all these other books, some of these have four ridges, other things like that. They have little emblems, so you could even go into the font tool like I showed in one of my previous videos and do a Boolean and put a stamp into that kind of, or some sort of symbol, or just repeat the books themselves and change the size 
anything you want because once you print it out and then you paint it you can always make them different colors too so I'm just going to take this one book itself and show you how to add it in to the bookshelf itself there it is so oh gosh that worked out really well that's funny okay so check how it's lined up because I do want it out a little bit oh gosh it's much higher I'll do right there looks pretty good actually that lined up almost perfect at first so what we'll do is I want to go into the modifiers for the bookshelf you want to make sure that the where is it oh there it is yeah go into object apply rotation and scale so that way this resets to one and the same thing for that and that just makes the boolean modifier work much better reset it to one okay so when you're your modifiers tab go into here boolean don't want intersect you want union and you can just click on the book itself before I hit apply, I usually like to hide the book and make sure that it stays there. Perfect. I'm just going to save this real quick. And hit apply. And now, when you go into the bookshelf, you can see that your book has been added. Awesome. So, you can continue making books, adding them in. I usually like to position everything first before I apply the Boolean modifier. I just wanted to show this as an example, but please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate the support and feedback. Let me know what you guys want to see next time, and I'll see you then.